In the previous video, we learned about attribute binding using the vbind directive. In this video, let's continue with attribute binding, but focus on one specific attribute, which is the class attribute. Let's start off with the class attribute in its most basic form. In the style block, I'm going to define a new class. The class name is underline, and we simply set text decoration to underline. In the template, I'm going to add an h2 tag with the text as underlined text. To apply the underlined class we have just defined, we specify the class attribute and then assign the class name. So class is equal to underline. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, you can see that the class and its styling is applied on the HTML element. Now this is an example of a static class. Static classes are the ones that never change and will always be present on the HTML element. But in a web app, you might want to manipulate an element's list of classes. In other words, you need dynamic classes, which allows you to add or remove classes when things change in your application. Now, dynamic classes are similar to static classes, but we have to use the vbind directive in order to bind a JavaScript expression to our class. So let me create a new data property called status and set it to danger. Now in the template, we can bind this property to the class attribute using the vbind directive. So h2 element, the text is going to be status. We're going to use the vbind directive. The attribute is class and the value is the data property status. If we now save the file and head to the browser, inspect the element, you can see that the class danger is applied which is the value of the status property. Change it to success and the class success is applied. This sort of a class binding allows you to change the class dynamically based on some data. For example, if there are errors in a form field, you might want to apply the text danger class. If there is valid data in the form, you might want to apply text success class. So bind the class based on the application state. Also, what's really nice about class binding is that you can have both static and dynamic classes on the same element. So on the status heading element, I can add class is equal to underline. If I now inspect the element, you can see that both the classes underline and success have been applied to the h2 element. This lets you have some static classes for the things you know won't change like positioning and layout and dynamic classes for certain things like your theme. So this is pretty much the basics of binding classes in view. However, there is more to it. Since the vbind directive accepts any JavaScript expression, we can do some pretty cool things like conditional binding. So back in VS Code, in the style block, let me define another class. Let's take an example of displaying movie names. If the movie is a promoted movie, we want the font style to be italicized. So new class, promoted, font style, italic. We can now add a new data property called is promoted, which serves as the condition for this promoted class to be applied. So is promoted and the value is true. Now in the HTML, we can use the logical and operator to conditionally apply the promoted class only if is promoted is true. So a new h2 tag, the text is going to be promoted movie and then class binding
is promoted and the string promoted which is the class name in the style block. So if is promoted is true, apply the promoted class. If you take a look at the browser, you can see that the text promoted movie is italicized and the promoted class is applied. If I change is promoted to false, the styling is removed from the promoted movie text. However, if you take a look at the class that is applied, it is equal to the string false, which is the evaluation of the expression we have specified. In order to properly handle this, we can make use of the ternary operator. To demonstrate that, let me define two more classes. If it's a new movie, we want a green colored text. And if the movie is sold out, we want the text to be red colored. We can now add a new data property called is sold out that is set to true. Now in the HTML, we can make use of the ternary operator. So h2 tag, the text is going to be a possible sold out movie and the class binding, if is sold out is true, apply the sold out class. If not, apply the new class. If you save the file and take a look at the browser, you can see that the text sold out movie is in red and the sold out class is applied. If I change is sold out to false, the new class is applied and the text is in green color. So in this way, you can conditionally bind a class to an element. Now, if at all, there are lots of different classes that you want to add dynamically, you can bind using arrays or objects. Let's look at arrays first. Suppose we need a movie which is new as well as promoted. We can then simply bind an array of new and promoted. So h2 tag, the text is going to be newly promoted movie and the class attribute binding, the value is going to be an array where each item is a class name. So new and promoted. If we take a look at the browser, you can see that both the classes are applied on the element and the styling is reflected in the UI. The font is italicized and the color is in green. Also, it is possible to specify expressions within the array. So if we had to combine the is promoted and is sold out conditions, we can easily do that. I'm going to copy this heading element and change the text to array conditional movie. And within the array, is promoted and apply the class promoted and copy this ternary operator. That is going to be the second element in the array. Please make a note, is promoted is set to false and so is is sold out, which means from the first expression, the promoted class never gets applied and from the second expression, the new class gets applied. So if I head to the browser, you can see that on the array conditional movie, only the new class is applied. If I set both to true, and we have promoted and the sold out classes applied. So this is the array's approach to binding classes. Now the object approach is also similar. Let's directly look at conditionally rendering the classes. In the template, I'm going to add another h2 tag. The text is going to be object conditional movie. And now when binding the class, we specify an object. The object will have key value pairs. 
The key is the class you want to apply to the element and the value is the condition for the class to be applied. To replicate the same condition as above, we would add three keys. The promoted class, which should be applied if is promoted is true. The new class, which should be applied if is sold out is false. So not is sold out. And finally, the sold out class, which should be applied if is sold out is true. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, we should have the same classes and styles applied as the array binding text. So promoted sold out, promoted sold out. Now I would say that the object approach is easier to specify conditions compared to the array approach. Feel free to use the one that you find easier for your purpose. All right, that is about binding classes and also binding classes conditionally in Vue 3. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.